Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Today, I want to talk about setting up camera views in X-Plane, which may sound complicated, but it is incredibly simple. So I'm sitting here in the Baron, and this is just the way it comes up. This is the default 3D cockpit view. But let's say that I like to sit a little higher in my seat, and maybe I like to sit a little closer to the... Uh, and that was the up arrow, by the way, a little, a little closer, uh, slide my seat forward, for lack of a better term. That's the um, greater than and less than symbol on the keyboard. I'll just move myself forward a little bit. And let's say I want to make that a camera angle or just a camera setting. With the num lock on, this only works with num lock on, I hold down control and hit the number one. So that's my camera number one, control one. Now let's say, I'm gonna go back to the default view. I want to get a, this is a 75 inch screen by the way, not everybody's gonna have a 75 inch screen. So it's not as useful for someone like me with a 75 inch screen, but let's say I want a nice tight shot of my switch panel area. Again, same thing. That'll make that camera number two. Control two. Now let's say I want to see a nice view of my throttle quadrant, maybe even with the aileron and, and elevator trim showing. Now I'm just panning my head left and right. Um, you could actually shift yourself over so it's directly in front of you. This is probably a more realistic view. So I'm going to say control three. Control three. All right, so let's test that out. So W is the default forward view. And I'm going to hit the number one on the numeric keypad. I need to stress that. This is on the numeric keypad, all of this. And there is that different, slightly you know, higher and f further forward view I mentioned that I wanted to create. Now I'm going to hit number two on the numeric keypad. That takes me down to my switch panel. And then I'm gonna hit the number three, and that takes me over to my uh, throttle quadrant. And you know, you can set up more. Um, let's say you want a, a nice tight shot on your radio stack. For some reason, my arrow keys are not working quite right. But this time, I'm gonna shift myself over so I'm looking straight on at them. And again, this is a 75 inch screen, so this is going to look really huge. And actually, let's include also the transponder in this. And I'm going to hit Control 4. I've just assigned camera number 4 to this view. So go back to the regular cockpit. There's camera number 1, camera number 2, camera number 3, camera number 4. And there we've set up four cameras um, inside the Baron to sort of focus in on certain areas that we want to see. Okay, where these cameras really come into play is when you're flying a heavy metal plane like the, this is the 747. Let's say I wanted to be able to see my overhead cockpit view and rather than panning around trying to, to get to my overhead panel, um, what I can do, and I'm since so I don't want this to be off to the side, I'm actually going to shift myself over to the very center of the plane, and then I'm going to look up, and then I'm going to use the greater than or less than, um, depending which way you want to go, to zoom out, and then I'm going to use my right mouse button to get this thing eh, pretty close. And there's the whole overhead panel. I'm going to hit Control 1. That's going to be my camera number one in this plane. And again, I stress NumLock must be on, and I'm hitting the 1 on the numeric keypad. Now, um, let's go back to the regular view here. Let's say I want to be able to, for some reason, my right mouse button is not cooperating with me today. I want to be able to. Um, Eh, let's say 
get a view something like this where I can see the majority of my instrumentation including autopilot so I'm gonna hit control 2 and that's gonna be my camera number 2 now we also have this area down between the seats I'm gonna use my right arrow to move myself over and then I'm going to use my right mouse button to look down and there is all the instruments between the seats I believe this is the FMS if I'm not mistaken I'm not a heavy metal guy well music maybe but not flying control 3 that is going to be my camera number 3 and then let's say I want a nice tight shot of my throttles here as well as these uh, instruments and these are engine indicators here I'm gonna say control 4 and then now I'm gonna hit W go back to my normal view now I have four cameras set up camera number one I just hit number one on the numeric keypad there's my overhead panel number two there is my sort of normal instrumentation view uh, number three that gives me all of the stuff between the pilot and the co-pilot seat. Number four, that gives me a nice close view of my throttles. And so there is the majority of what I need to see in four buttons. Now, you can assign more, but I'm just trying to keep it simple here. Okay, let's take this one step further. Let's say you don't like using the keyboard, the numeric one, two, three, and four. One thing you can do is set up your buttons, any unused buttons on your, um, any controller, any controller at all that you might have. I just hooked up a flight sim yoke here. And so let's say this red button number 12, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll do number 12. It's right now it's set to toggle the white flashlight. I don't know that I've ever used that, quite honestly. I'm going to hit edit, and I'm going to say... So what you need to look for is um, the function is called go to save... Excuse me. Um, yeah, go to save 3D cockpit location number either 1, 2, 3, or 4. So... Um, probably type in the word location might narrow that down and so I see I have go to save 3d location number one number two etc I'm gonna set it to number two and so now if I hit this button I go to 3d cockpit location number two and if I hit it again it looks like it returns me so if I just want to quickly, quickly be able to glance up at the overhead console, panel, whatever you call it, I hit the button I assigned to my 3D location number two, which I said was the overhead panel, and then hit it again and go back. And of course, you can program all of the different camera views that you set up. Remember, camera view number three was the area between the co-pilot and the pilot's seat. So... Hopefully that's a quick video to help you, especially if you're working with one monitor, to be able to jump around between the various areas. And even if you have three monitors, this will work as well.